Okay, farmers, investors, people looking for new opportunities in life, people looking for a change, people moving into career choices, young people making decisions about their future. I've got something for you. Farming's the new future. It's the new way out. It's a new growth space. Food prices are increasing. Supply shortages are appearing. The problem's getting worse. It's a systems failure. Now, this can be solved with regenerative ag. Regenerative ag is specific and precise, but the thing is with the regenerative ag, we keep the margins when food prices go up. We create unemployment, we, we, create, we create employment, we create jobs, we create new economic growth. The reason we do that is we use in situ ecological processes to do the, uh, for the input side. We don't go to the fertilizer shop and spend money anymore. It's profitable. It's more profitable now. This is where it works for us. Let me elaborate a bit more on the profitability side of it. Because regenerative agriculture is input driven from ecology, that means that ecological processes are management based, which means that the cost comes down to human intelligence, human labor, all of those intrinsic qualities that we have as a community, as individuals. Now we apply that through specific prisms, through specific framework and structures and understandings and insights through syntropic agriculture, holistic management, etc. There's a small group of them that are all based on ecological processes, ecological management. Now, if we use that as our input, we have a very, very stable input base. We're not externalizing risk out to inflation, hyperinflation, increasing costs and scarcity of inputs that we would otherwise substitute ecological processes with, like fertilizers, whether they're organic, whether they're mineral, no matter what, pesticides. Ecological processes balance and go into harmony. The costs are lower. They're, 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 it's all based on management and decision making. That is a very constant fixed cost. It's not prone. But most food production, or just about every form of food production globally is driven by other forces, which are the input side. Not only the input side, the increasing cost and scarcity of fertilizers and other, other inputs, particularly diesel. Um, the other ones are diminishing returns because of this collapse of topsoil. That's another factor. There's many others. There's many, many others. Very little to zero redundancy. As soon as something goes wrong, there's a type of collapse. One flood, one drought etc etc so that's how profitability works in regenerative enterprises you may not make any more money at the end of the year on a gross on the gross um, side of things on the on that balance sheet there but when you look into it your net yeah you chop out all of your costs you pick up that margin that's called profitability now it's working for us on another side too there's many more efficiencies that are coming back in the market's not de not demanding perfect food anymore. It's starting to take what it can get. It's getting more realistic. So what it is, is a situation where, where it took us almost 10 times more cost and effort to produce perfect food than it does to go one more step down to produce high quality food and good food. It's really cheap and easy for us to produce. The efficiency is coming back. You see what I'm saying? The contrivances of the first world are not there anymore. We're getting pushed back into actual being just being practical to just being normal about life so no more perfect food doesn't need to happen just good food all sorts of different crop choices are available to us now the power is ours it's easier to grow it now those sort of choices that, that the market are making the, the differences are making it easy for us so I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on this one now for years forever since I can I can personally remember, I'm sure it was different a long time ago, uh, but we have had to supply practically perfect produce for it to be accepted by the market. There's very, very little to no market for second grade. Uh, <clears throat> look, over time we've had all of these great initiatives, let's you know go and buy dish, you know, misshapen fruit and bent carrots and everything like that, but there's no... Yeah, that's never, the rubber's really never hit the road with that. Not like it will now. And this is why. Because increasing food shortages, higher prices, 
buyers, markets, uh, agents are starting to just get whatever they can. Things are changing. This market is not going to go back to the way it was before. You know, it's just going to change. It's a permanent situation. So what, what, it, what it means is really good food with one blemish is going to be taken without an argument. The market's going to get used to this. We're all going to get used to this. We're going to see premium food in the supermarkets or wherever, and it's going to have maybe one hole in it or a bit of a mark on it, you know. <laughs> um, now, why this was so awesome for farmers and for us, you know, and is because to make the food perfect requires maybe 10 to or more and times the effort and cost than to have it nearly perfect. When it's nearly perfect with one blemish, it's no good to the market. They won't take it. We have to throw it away or try to get rid of it somewhere else or process it or something like that. But this is now a viable product for us. So we don't have to go those, incur those stupidly, ridiculously higher costs, big efforts spraying all the time every single every time there's a sign of anything spray 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 because as soon as you get one mark that's no good you can't sell it you know that drives a farmer nuts that makes them a nervous wreck that's damaging to the soul that sort of stuff um putting netting over everything because a white fly might bite a hole in a rocket leaf no people when they can't get rocket agents when they can't get rocket, they can't get this, they can't get that, the market wants it, they're going to buy it because it's the only alternative is nothing. Beggars can't be choosers. The reality is starting to creep back into our world. And it's benefiting farmers. And that's why it's a huge, it's another whole area of profitability because the cost is so much lower to produce great quality food with maybe one hole or two holes in each... Bro um, Swiss chard leaf, you know, or a slightly misshapen carrot or a bunch when, you know, one of them's a stump. If there's no other carrots, they're going to take it. And this is the way things are moving in the market. This is the way this whole macroeconomic thing's developing. So this is great for farmers. So I'll just summarise it, you know. It costs so much more to get everything perfect. It costs so much less to get everything nearly perfect. You can sell nearly, every, nearly everything. Farming gets easier, more profitable. You know, we're not going to be so stressed out as farmers because reality's coming back around and reality suits farming. Now, I'll go back again to the margins because this is key. Food prices are going up. The reason being scarcity of inputs and all sorts of other problems. But... The reality is with regenerative ag, we keep the margins because we use, again, I'll say it, we use in situ ecological functions to do the inputs, to grow the food. It's a management based thing based on ecology. Now, regenerative ag is specific and precise. It's not old school organic. It's not the way things used to be. It's modern. Now it's specific and precise. Holistic management, syntropic ag, not much more outside of that at the moment but things are changing really, really, really quick. We're developing it into much more versatile applications and those principles are applying across to many different contexts now. It's getting easier, it's getting better, it's a way forward. I will elaborate further. Here's another way to become more profitable. Here's another way we can increase the margins and this one's great. When you have a truly regenerative system, it's driven by ecology, like I've mentioned. So it's the ecological function in situ which drives the fertility. That alone is great. Like I said, you're not going to the shop to get your stuff to feed your soil and your plants. It's not prone, you know, you're not prone to the price volatility, inflation and supply shortages which chew your margins out in, in any standard organic or conventional agriculture. But when a system, a food system, is ecologically driven, you're managing ecology. And guess what happens when you manage ecology the right way? 
it keeps getting better and better and better. It's why we call it regenerative agriculture. It goes through positive, a positive feedback loop continually, <clears throat> which means you become, things get more and more abundant. Your ecology gets better and better. Your crops become more and more abundant, diverse. You're more drought proof because you've got so much more soil carbon and water stored in your soil. You're, you're much more um, robust in all ways. Pests, no, there's too much diversity for too many pests. And it keeps getting better every year, providing you manage it the right way, providing you use the right approach, be it syntropic agriculture, which is woodland ecology, or holistic management, which is savanna ecology. And guess what? They combine to create an even bigger positive feedback loop. So you can have your poultry your cattle, your eggs, you know, all of those enterprises running down in between uh, tree rows on grass. You know, this we've only just begun. You know, the, the new one on the the new one on the block is the syntropic ag, the woodland ecology, which goes through the same species succession type of, of uh, system as as does the the grassland management of holistic management. <clears throat> So that's it. It's a positive feedback loop that begins and it gets better and better and better, more and more fertility, more and more soil carbon, and it is driven by species succession. That is the key. Now that's one of the that's the single most important outstanding factor that identifies regenerative agriculture is it is driven by species succession. And we have the framework to manage that now through the disciplines that I've just shared, that creates that process and it does work and you get more and more and more biomass, more and more life. Now life is biomass, biomass is life. Biomass is also the form of whatever it is your production is. So you can create more and more biomass through this process and whatever that biomass expresses as your product that you sell, you choose through management. That's how it works. It's a connection thing. You, as a human, connect with the ecology and management, uh, manage it. It's a um, management-based thing. So it's all a very human interaction thing. And, um, <clears throat> you know, you, it's back to connection. You know, we have this. We, innately, we have this. we just got to relearn it. So um, I'm doing it. I'm mega excited. I'm putting a project together, a new one. You know, I, I had a farm... Um, a year ago, 18 months ago, which um, wrapped up, starting a new product t project, taking everything I learned from that into the new one, rolling it out in a serious way. Um, I teach it, um, I share my journey, um, and if you um, want to become involved and learn really closely about how it's done, um, you're welcome to come into my platform, which is a subscription-based plat platform. It's very affordable. I've priced it at two beers per week. Um, in that is an online course that I've written and made, which brings in all of the, um, the foundations and principles, particularly of syntropic agriculture, but we cover holistic management and we cover the comb combination of the weight of multi-enterprise. We also, it's also part of a community where all other, there's a lot of other members around the world that are doing this with me together. And you also share my journey through my project and what I'm doing, what drives my decision making, my wins, my failures, and my goals and everything like that. So it's a good place to learn. There's many other good places to learn also, but I encourage anybody who has an entrepreneurial type of spirit about them, who wants to start a project, who wants to improve their farm already, or who wants to start farming, or yeah, start some sort of investment, um, maybe nominate a manager, get them in with me for me to teach, maybe come to me for a consultation and get a start, give me a phone call, it's really easy, it's a simple place to start. but. This is where the smart money is moving. This is the place to go for the future because it's a yielding investment. You don't have to worry about capital gains getting chopped out by inflation. 
it's a tangible yield it's a highly liquid yield food tangible liquid and it doesn't suffer diminishing returns it's a perfect investment for the type of um, challenges that we're facing moving forward into the future